Hey everyone, this is DM Domination from Grim Press, and today I'm going to be highlighting a Fantasy Grounds extension for you. Polymorphism by Bill Perry or Silent Ruin is an awesome extension, one of four, that you can pick up on the DM's Guild with the link below. Additionally, in the description here, you will find a link to the Fantasy Grounds forums where you can find additional information from the author, including a video that dives into the intricacies and details more in depth than I will be in this preview. In the interest of time, I'm gonna dive straight in and let you know right off the bat that in order for this extension to work, you're going to need to have the player character or NPC on the combat tracker. And after testing this and taking a look at it, I also am a DM who has two games. Both my games have a druid in them and both my games have a wizard and or sorcerer in them and we have been using another extension for our polymorphing and wild shaping needs for over a year and we have done a full transition to this extension because of the ease of use the clean appearance and the advanced features that i will be demonstrating to you today so let's dive straight in with the wizard to start with so let me scoot him over just a bit and i'm going to demonstrate polymorph first in order for this to show up, you're going to need a character class level of the appropriate level and one of these four spells on your character sheet. Once it is on the combat tracker and the things have been met, you will have this here. And Halo, you will add things. You will notice that the polymorph options are missing. You will pull up the NPC tab from the book you're choosing to use. I am choosing to use the monster manual because it has some really nice looking tokens. I will show you a little later when I get to Druid how to change it for your own customization. But for now, let's just use these. So you will drag and drop right here, and then you can close it and move to the next one. I'm gonna put a hawk on here, and we will use a bat just so you can see what the letter tokens look like. But for the most part, I wanna keep some nice tokens for you to take a look at. So that's how they all work. So it is worth noting some of the challenge ratings because I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, the author of the this extension has taken great pains and put a lot of really amazing work into this so that you will be able to have the advanced features. Um, the one I'm gonna demonstrate to you right now is that you cannot add a non-beast because that's not how polymorph works. So if I were to try and put polymorph into a beholder, I'm gonna get an error. It is not a beast, It is, which is the only valid type for polymorph. So we will be restrained by the spell. In addition, if we take a look at goblins with a challenge rating of 1 fourth, and we were to take an Allosaurus, an Allosaurus, and try to polymorph them with a challenge rating of two, we will be able to see how that will work out for us. Now, how it will actually function is you pick the spell, you pick the creature, and you target the creatures. When you do that, you will activate. It will roll a save, but it will say, let me scoot over here, Allosaur, Allosaurus challenge rating or level of two or greater than that of the goblin, 0 0.25. So it's not valid for polymorph. But a giant fire beetle with a challenge rating of zero will be. So when we activate that and we get those saving throws, we're going to see pass, fail, fail. And that is going to be a pretty awesome feature for those of you who may have players who don't quite read all the way down the spell description. And like the spell says, in the event of this player casting this on them and then another player in their party doing some damage we will be able to see that it is just like everything else in the polymorph they will take damage they will then take damage exceeds by two and then that's transferred back to the goblin they are automatically shifted back so that is one of the really awesome features so let's go ahead and take this off of Mr. Goblin right here, and we will switch over to Animal Shapes. And the same list will appear there if it is appropriate. 
and we will use this on our allies. And let's switch to the animal shape description that you will be able to take a look at. So with animal shapes, we will have this uh, spell that will be targeting willing creatures. So when you cast, let's go ahead and target a goblin since he's not willing, and we will try to turn them all into a hawk. You will notice it will say, can only target same faction, the willing, so did not change the goblin, but it did change our allies. If you wanted to, for example, make this particular fellow a bat, you could do that without messing up what you already have. And if you wanted to stop concentrating, you could do exactly that. So with that stop concentrating, you'll notice it's not working. Oh, I accidentally clicked it. Well, if you hover, it says double click to stop your concentrations. So that will prevent any accidents from happening. So the only other major difference, there are much more intricacies, but the only other major difference when it comes to something like polymorph and true polymorph and animal shapes, you're going to notice that this is also going to target creatures. It's going to affect them in many ways, but you will notice that it may have some other options if you were to try to change them into an Azer because they are providing options that are not bestial. Assuming he fails that save, he will then be Azer challenge rating is too high. So you'll notice that it will continue to manage those things. So you would need to come up with something like an ice method. I think that's actually still too high, but it will fully function if you were to, let's say, mess with one of your allies and try and turn them into an Azer, it would work. We'll go ahead and shut that off and dive into the next aspect. There are many other features such as how they interact when it comes to existing effects and equipment, but I'm gonna let you dive into the intricacies of that on a video from the author. So we are going to move on from the polymorph and use this in the form of druids. And that is if you are a druid and you have wild shape, you will notice that this is a slightly modified version. We have two druids to demonstrate today. So we're going to slide on down, let's space these. We have Kierstag, a player from my campaign and someone I have named Baby Kierstag. So this is going to be a level eight druid and a level two druid, level one monk. So I have a couple on Kierstag, which is right here. And we can turn Kierstag into a giant octopus. One of the things that I would like you to notice with your druids are you get a completely different character sheet. This isn't something where you have to manage it. And let's click here and bring up the old character sheet by clicking here. And you will notice that the intelligence, wisdom, and charisma are the same. So that actually transitions over as do all of these features so that when Kierstag is playing and turns herself into an octopus, she now has the ability to function with this character sheet just the way the DM would. So that is a really, really, really useful feature. If you want to change your shape when you are in that, you can transition back to Kierstag and then transition back to another one. The last thing I want to show you is if you were to change into a creature and you wanted to take a look, you'll notice that because Kierstag is a level six moon druid, she has the benefit of primal strikes, making the attacks magical for overcoming resistance. And you'll notice that it's automatically added damage type magic when she turned into a polar bear and it's gone when she turns back. This is something that you will not see if you were to, for example, try to turn into an Aliosaurus, it doesn't work. It will stop your players and you from accidentally adding a creature that is too high level for them. But if they were to go with Fire Beetle, you'll notice that the Fire Be Beetle does not have that primal strike because as I mentioned, he is a level two druid level one monk who does not have primal strikes. So that is going to be a 
aut advanced automation feature that prevents accidents from happening, getting access to creatures that they can't have access to. So that is one of my favorite advanced features in addition to the effects disabling that you can take a look at in the author's video. So for you DMs who are saying, what if I don't have a player who is a druid or a wizard, or I have an entire party of clerics or fighters, how is this useful to me? Well, up here, we will be going over that. And we have also, as a DM who's run the Curse of Strahd, you will notice that it appears on NPC sheets as well. Again, if they're on the combat tracker. So how is this useful to you? I will show you. We will scroll on up here, and in your shape changers, I have gone over and I've created something that allows me to create a shape. But we will start off with, let's see, the bat for Strahd is here. And then, of course, we have a cloud of mist right here, which is something I have created. I didn't go super in-depth, but if you look here, it tells you that Strahd has the same amount of hit points and so forth, and is immune to non-magical damage, so I have added that in. And then we would, of course, need the wolf from the actual monster manual, or Curse of Strahd, depending on how you wanted to do it. So let's grab Mr. Wolf here, and we'll drop him over here. So with Strahd, you will be able to shape change him as the DM, and you will be able to use this shape changing feature fully, and it will say, this is a reference sheet the, to create CG entries on the initial list. What this is referring to is if you want to have a custom sheet where you have all of this set up ahead of time, you could create it here, which is what I've been doing. And so when you preload it into the actual character sheet, it will transition over here. Now the one that you'll notice here that I have already created does not have wolf because it has separated the character sheet that is added here from the unique character sheet that I have added here. So if you wanted to do all of this ahead of time, you could, and I wanted you to be able to see the difference here. You could add any creature that has shape changer or polymorph on their actual list. So for Strahd, for example, he is a spellcaster. He does have polymorph, so you could go through and add in his shapes, and then you could switch to polymorph and add in all of your features or beasts that you intend to turn your character into. It took off the cloud of mist because it isn't appropriate. It's not a beast. And if you were to delete Strahd here, that'll disappear. Strahd will go here, naturally rolling a 15 in his initiative count as Strahd is want to do. And then on your actual character sheet you have, again, Cloud of Mist is not appropriate. You will have the bat he can turn into. And let's switch to this and Cloud of Mist. And we can turn Strahd into a Cloud of Mist. And he will be able to move around. And you can make him invisible and move him any way you want. Uh, DM won't go invisible on the DM screen. So that is the how to use it on NPCs. And the last thing I do want to show you is if you had a player who likes to customize their things. I have a player who does. So I have an ice spider. And what you can do for these players is just like I showed you with Strahd, you can create your unique one. And I have a player who loves the ice spider token. So you can pick up a token pack from Grim Press or any of them and pop a custom token in. I also have a player who has a homebrew ability that allows him to get a plus three to his armor class. And so I can modify this for Kierstack. And when she is playing the ice spider, I will drop it and it will reference this ice spider, not the standard ice spider because I have modified her ice spider. So you will be able to modify things in any way that make you and your game work. So this is the polymorphism extension from Bill Perry. 
or Silent Ruin, as he's known on Discord. And you can reach out to us on the Grim Press Discord from the link in the description. And I strongly encourage you to pick this up, especially for those of you who have druids. Uh, know that you're going to have druids that have 15 different shapes as opposed to how my other game had an entire area down here where she would have all of these extension uh, creatures that they were wanting to use but you will be able to instead have everything neatly organized here customized on the npc sheet and then drug straight over thank you for your time have a good day